the world famous Eric Marshall in the studio with us. I got my first job um, before I'd even left high school. That's the first thing I learned in high school. Early on, I was national trainer and they had to pick me up at the airport because I couldn't rent a car. It took years for us to make a really cool product. How many woodworkers actually make money? How would someone get into that? This is an encouraging positive message right here from Eric Marshall. to another podcast of On the Shop Floor. Now today, today is a very special day. And I mean that in a million different ways. But as you know, the point of this podcast is to move the needle for us poor woodworkers. And today I have the world famous Eric Marshall in the studio with us to talk to us about what are we going to talk to us about? We're going to talk about moving the needle. We're going to talk about moving yeah. the needle. We're going to talk about how to get out of that broken down Ford truck. We're going to talk about getting the ripped jeans off and getting something nice on your butt, okay? <laughs> and, and listen, this yeah. for, for the people who are just listening, you have to see Eric's outfit and you'll be like, yeah, that's how I want to look. I'm here. just a yeah. carpenter and I got <laughs> nice clothes on now. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I mean, there, there might only be one or two people on the planet that don't know who you are at this point, but... For them, can we just start at the beginning? You have oh, wow. you have an incredible maybe yeah. not maybe not yeah, maybe not when I when I was the born. woodworking but, beginning. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Go, let's start yeah. the woodworking. The, the woodworking yeah. beginning, yeah, is a, it's a long story. So first off, I've been in uh, in the woodworking industry for forty five years or more. I don't count anything prior to high school, but in high school, um, I did really well in woodworking. Um, I got my first job um, before I'd even left high school in a woodworking shop, and that was California Closets. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a carport with a Sears 10-inch table saw in it. Um, and that was the first shop we ever had. For California closets? For California closets. Okay, because people who are listening know California closets oh, now yeah. as California. So it's you California were, closets. You yeah. were the first. The first, yeah. okay. I mean, this is yeah. a big deal. Yeah, there, there was another guy before me. He actually had, he had ownership of the San Diego store we installed together, but my friend Mike has passed. Um, so it leads me to carry the torch. And uh, the founder of the closet industry is Neil Balter, but he lives kind of in Mexico and kind of in Scottsdale. And, um, he's doing really well for himself. He doesn't nearly need to work anymore. He takes care of his kids and have fun. And my kids are, I started young, so my kids are older now. And so I've got a second, a second shot at doing this whole thing again, which is amazing. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> pushing particle board through a Rockwell table saw, getting in a broken down Chevy truck and going over to Weyerhaeuser to pick up 15 sheets um, to do that. That's what we did. And like the beginning closets were raw particle board. It was, it was raw particle board. This super cool TFL stuff we had today was non-existent. The first laminate we ever used was Cortron. It was a painted particle board. Right. Um, most, it, you know, there was no cell phones. There was, there was no, we had drill motors. We didn't have screw guns. It was corded. Right, yeah. So, you know, it was a different industry. We sanded the edge to upgrade it. There wasn't edge banding. That edge banding didn't there was exist. no edge banding. It didn't really exist. If you wanted to edge band, it was high-pressure laminate. You had to right. strip for mica and edge band the front edge with, and then route it and sand file it, it and file sand it, sand it, it, yeah. it and get Didn't it all done. done and I've done all that. In fact, it, you know, it, it's been a long experience and so I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot because we came from nothing to the most amazing closet product that's out there. That is California Closets that you guys all know. It's an amazing, very well-to-do product. Lots of people are doing really well. It's a huge industry. There's thousands of employees, hundreds of shops with state-of-the-art equipment, you know, they have overnight stacking machines that stack rainbow stacks of wood so in the morning they can start working. You know, it's just, yeah. it's robotic and really cool. And that's what I've watched my whole life. Okay, so just so we can paint a little a historical picture here, that, what about five years in? So day one, you've got these, you're pushing particle board through a yeah. table saw. Now, just fast forward, only five years. Where's California Closets five years after Five that? years in, we're actually selling franchises already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, that happened pretty quickly, actually. Um, 
and that was a lot of fun too because I was still I was still young, um, but we probably had about half the franchisees already in. I think in five years there's probably thirty five stores. It took two or three years to start doing it, and then they start then we started doing it. And then I became a trainer. I became a national trainer, and I was still young, you know. Early on, I was national trainer, and they had to pick me up at the airport because I couldn't rent a car. Because you had to be 25. <laughs> yeah. I'm old, people. I'm 61 years old. Oh, you wouldn't know it. Yeah. So do the math. If I'm telling you 45 years in, I didn't start when I was 12. Right. Um, and so, like, you had to pick me up at the airport. You had to drive me to places. Like, it wasn't because I could, it wasn't a cost and you couldn't rent a car. And so I'm out there training people. I'm going to shops all over the world. We're building benches and... You know, we're not part of the woodworking industry. We're different. We, we're a sales and marketing company. Mm. It's different. And so we had to learn the woodworking on our own. Mm -hmm. We didn't have other shops to ask questions, you know. For the first years, there wasn't even drawers. We didn't have drawers. We were just, we are creating a product line that changed people's lives. I was going to say, was there anyone else in that space at the time? Like, like no, but now some of my best friends are the biggest competitors we had back then. Right. Yeah, for sure. You know, Closet Factory came on, Closet by Design, uh, Closet World, uh, thousands of closet companies today. And it's funny because we do have this closet show and it's not super competitive. It's not really like that. We're more of a sharing crowd. There's more of a family going on. Like when Richie DeMarco says, hey, closet family, he's not joking. Right. We all get along. We love to share stuff. And, you know, because it was a sales and marketing company, we had to catch up with our woodworking. You know, I was a woodworker in high school. I knew that. But, like, it took years for us to make a really cool product because the product was just about storing stuff. Right. You know, if we get your shoes off the floor, that was an accomplishment. <laughs> you know? And so that's where we came from. That's five years in. Um, I'm traveling. I'm teaching people how to do it. Um, it's how I learned how to train people. And, like, you know, we just were, were ground up stuff. It wasn't, right. there wasn't people to tell us what to do. So we had to figure it out. The first belt rack was a raw piece of particle board with cup hooks screwed in by <laughs> hand and a KV side mount runner on the back of it. I mean, that was the first belt rack. And now we have these beautiful leather trimmed aluminum anodized belt racks that are amazing with little trays at the bottom for your cufflinks. Right. So it, it's a trip. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's got to be something for you. You, 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 you pioneered this yeah. stuff and, and now you walk through the shows and see what it, what is, is blossomed into. Yeah. What about now are you still with? No, you, no, you're... no. I've been gone from California Closet for over twenty five years. Okay, yeah. so where, where? And yeah, where no, about I know there's a struggle. Accent? I say we all the time when I talk about <laughs> yeah, California yeah. Closets. I know. I'm sorry, California Closets. I know. Don't. I don't work for them, you guys. They are good friends of mine, but I feel vested because I was there for so long right. and was part of it. And yeah, now I think of the industry as something that I helped bring up, and I just sit there and, and wonder sometimes, like, wow, how did this happen? You know. So it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How many woodworkers actually make money? Like if we started mm -hmm. there, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you, like we have a consulting division. We, <laughs> I've been around for 30 years and I would say safely 90% are not making money. Yeah. 5% are breaking even 5% are probably, or maybe 3% are like, they, they can pay their bills and maybe 2% are actually making money yeah. over and above what, you know, taking, taking dividends and stuff from a company. So there's this, yes. there's this need for profit in the cabinet space. And I see all of these kitchen guys struggling, but then I went to one of your presentations and you handed me a one foot by one foot, <laughs> piece of melamine yeah. and you're like I'll tell you how much each industry gets for this yeah. and that was the point where I was like me and Eric need to sit down and talk about this so yeah. maybe could you do you remember the, I, well, like, yes yeah. yes because it, I talk about this all the time so a, a board foot like that's the first thing I learned in high school was that you gotta buy a board foot of wood and what are you gonna make out of it and 
you know, in high school, they don't teach you how much money you could have made out of it, which probably should be a thing that we should have done. Right. <laughs> but the board foot, when it resales, how much does it sell for? Right. We have an industry of woodworkers and there's all kinds of, you know, architectural millwork, cabinet guys, guys that build tables, guys that do pocket doors or barn doors. Mm -hmm. There's so much to do with wood. It's a huge industry, but you're right. Who actually makes the money, you know? And so first off, you're, you need to find value in what you're doing and charge appropriately. Okay. It's so I always tell people it's not your money. So don't think you're not asked. Just ask for more. Just ask for more. Okay? <laughs> you don't get what you don't ask. You don't get what you don't ask for. Yeah, because <laughs> if you're scared because you wouldn't spend that much money on it yourself, you're wrong. Right. Okay. Because mm -hmm. she wants it, so let her have it and charge her money. And then go back to the board square foot. So like, in the kitchen cabinet industry or the cabinet industry in general, it's two point two times cost of materials is what you sell for. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay, architectural mill works a little bit higher because there's a lot more time put in, um, but it's sucked up in labor and redos. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't like it. Well, That's I, I not what we talked years, about. And I, yeah. you know, I couldn't get out of that. Uh, paint, it again. <laughs> paint it again. Paint it again. Paint it again. Yeah. And I know what you do, so I'm sorry. And guess what? You never have to paint TFL. Right. Never. Yeah. And, uh, you don't have to sand it. You don't have to glue it. The, in, the fittings are all insertion fittings. There's very little screws. And we get six to nine times board cost. What? Do we, can six, I just check and make sure this six, mic was, was worth Six to nine times board cost is what we retail this stuff for. Because we're more of a retail business. We're, we don't ever feel like we're wholesale. We feel like we're filling a need. When you count a lady's shoes and then tell her she can line them all up so she gets to look at them, there's an eccentric value in that that pushes the cost of the board through the roof. And that's what we do. We service a need. The need is I don't have enough storage. Right. What do I do to get it? Because I've tried everything. I've been to Target and, and yeah, I bought the show. Yeah, bought the bins in Walmart. I bought yeah. it all and all the plastic is coming apart and I don't know what top goes on which one anymore and they become trophies and and closets don't do that. They're, they're semi-precious shelving. Because, hey, you guys might know this, but shoes cost hundreds and thousands of dollars for the customers that we work with, the customers that you are working with currently. Um, you just don't know what's going on. And to put thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars worth of shoes on shelves, there's value in that. You're, you're actually, when, when we look at it from a woodworking perspective, we're looking at it as, wow, that's a bunch of melamine hanging on the wall, and, and, and geez, I wouldn't pay X no. dollars for that. But Mrs. Smith is looking at it going, thank God I can put my $3,000 Gucci's up, up off the on floor the and I can see them. And yeah. I, I think that's the part that, that it's bridging that gap yeah. for a woodworker, because you know, we just started making kitchens in our garage or whatever. We're not, we're not in that mindset even like we probably wouldn't do it for ourselves, so we're just like yeah i don't know exactly it's not your money right so stop t acting like you know what's going on with her money like how much she'll spend right I love yeah that. I love, that's a pretty so we could we could end the podcast right there yeah. it's like it's not your money next <laughs> yeah yeah do you want it to be your money that's the other question do you are you really right. like it can it be your money are you willing to make the thing the changes in your life and to make it your money so you can have what you want so that's where you need to get in your mind is like so first off we had to find a product line that we're going to make some money at right right hey sorry it's closets <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing about this whole thing like everybody laughs and i've heard this many times eric what about when you do all the closets i'm like are you, are you kidding me i do you know how many closet companies are around the world so you know in vegas there there's probably there's probably 25 calls of companies that I look it up really hard. Right. There's probably eight that are advertising. Okay. Right. How many kitchen cabinet companies do you think are in Vegas? Um, yeah, hundreds. Hundreds, yeah. right? Okay, how many closets are there in a house compared to kitchens? Oh my God. You're There's more space. Bombs, Eric. There's just... more space in closets in the house because now, add, just forget about the primary and the secondary and the three kids' closets. We also have a pantry. We also have. Garages. Garage cabinets. Mm -hmm. We also have laundry rooms that the builder's putting a shelf in. 
And she's, she hates that. She doesn't have any place to hang her clothes. She's hanging on the back of the door, the doorknob, and now the clothes are dirty again because the door's dirty. So you need to give her a hanging space in there and mud rooms and entertainment centers and TV credenzas. And, you know, flat malamine has become that. You know, when I, start, when I started seeing crown moldings go away and then drawers become three-quarter inch TFL, I was like, oh my gosh, we've come of age. <laughs> here we go. Like, here we go. We don't need a trim guy to do all this anymore because flat trim is fine. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and TFL is all flat trim. Malamine is all flat trim. We don't put crown molding on anything anymore. We put a trim on the top and it's flat. It might not even be taller than three quarters of an inch. And uh, that's fine. And they think of it as less lines to clean. Right. And she don't even clean it anyway. Somebody else is cleaning it for her. <laughs> Well, I'm just I'm just picturing if you could if you go to a kitchen guy right and you're like, hey, kitchen guy, come here, let's let's have a chat. If you could build a kitchen that was almost all the same, would that be cool? You're like, oh yeah. Now, if you could build a kitchen that had no finishing, would that be cool? Oh yeah. What if you could build a kitchen that had like one tenth of the doors? Would that be cool? Be like, oh my god, yeah, that would be the most. Yeah, you just did a closet. Yeah, and you just charge three times as much. <laughs> with for three times. As much. Yes, yes. Oh my God, it makes me want to go start a closet company. <laughs> yeah, I'm too busy. I, I can't. But I mean, well, I think this is. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and podcast now, Brad and Eric yeah. start a closet company. Which is segue into that's what I do now. I literally help people get in right. the closet. And this is I know this is selfless promotion, but he said I could do this, so I you own. I literally own a company now, and all I do is travel and help people get into the closet business. Right. And I train them. And that's what I do. Yeah, there's a fee for that, but it's well worth it. Um, and so that's what I do. And so done with that. Okay. Yeah. Go, so I was just go going to ask you, though, like <clears throat> for someone looking for that transition, it's like, okay, I can't just stop what I'm doing and, and say, okay, I'm building closets now. How would, how would someone get into that? Yeah. Because the first thing is, well, yeah, okay, I'm in, I want to build closets, but how, where do I, yeah. like I can build the closet because I have the machines, I have the people, I have the knowledge, I have the, you know, we'll get into maybe software in a second, but how do I make that transition from one cu customer to another? Yeah, yeah, so um, there's a lot of ways to do this. It's not just me, there's other venues that will help you. Um, there is an association, um, the Cabinet Makers Association, uh, the Kitchen Cabinet Association, um, all the association, there is a closet association. It's smaller because there's less of us, um, but there's all, there's, you can join that. There's some forms on there. You can ask questions and stuff. Um, there's also a closet show coming up in April. Is that in Chicago? It's, it's in Chicago in Schaumburg. So there's a closet show. So come to Schaumburg, hang out with the rest of us. You'll find out we're a crazy bunch, um, <laughs> but we love life and we're making good money. Um, and you come to that show and there's, there's a lot of education going on there. The show is more about education than vendors. I mean, yeah, for sure vendors buy booths and rent space and pay for the show, but the important stuff is hanging out with your new peers that do closets mm -hmm. and aren't afraid to let you know. Because, you know, with, with companies with 250% increase in growth in a couple of years, that's, that means there's a gap. That it means right. we don't have enough people doing it, you know. A 40-year-old company that announces on the Wall Street Journal, hey, the past two years we've grown by 250%, there's something wrong. Right. And it's not that they shouldn't be able to make money, because trust me, they are. And it's, it's that there's an opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. Because there's way more, again, there's way more closets in the house and garage cabins and mudrooms than there is a kitchen. And there's, what about connecting that, that from the point of yeah I can build it to the customer like how do I find that customer is it the same customer I'm building a kitchen it's for the same my customer mind yeah it, th there's there's nothing more you need to do than just say hey by the way we do closets too because if you don't say that somebody else is going to come in like me and take the business <laughs> eat your and lunch. I might even eat lunch and your dinner I might even steal the kitchen cabinet job from you because <laughs> all of a sudden like I'm super trusted because I know about storage and she's connecting with me and you know, you can take that storage piece into anywhere. You can take it right into the kitchen. You know, I, I hate to go this far back, but the kitchen used to be about a triangle, right? I mean, there's more appliances now, 
but we need to spend more time on really focusing on the customer's needs. Because if you're going to continue to do kitchens, that's fine, you guys. But if you're going to do that, don't sell by the box anymore. You're not doing yourself a service. Sell by what it's doing for the products that are already in the home. The pots, the pans, the trash can, the rolls of, of whatever is going to go in the drawers, the knives, the cutlery. Add the jewelry to it to increase the value. You know, If you're just selling boxes but you didn't put inserts in every single box... That was half of the money you could have made. Because the inserts, and, and don't think you should sell the inserts at just a little bit of money. You should sell the inserts at more money. There's a bigger margin. So for cabinet makers, we're, we're beating on them and we're kind of saying like, listen guys, get your head just far enough out of your butt to, to see a closet and before it gets sucked back up in there and you, yeah. and you don't make closets. So there's, there's just something to be said there's a market there that you're probably not tapping into. Do it. With yeah. The message. Yeah. Do it. See, sell it with, and and in general, just charge more for what you're doing. Like, yeah. I don't want to beat on them. I want to encourage the guys. You, hey, you guys, this is an encouraging, positive message right here from Eric Marshall. You are a crafted person. You have skills. You should be getting paid for what you're doing. If you don't want to do closets, that's fine. I'm not saying that we need all of you to do that, but for sure, start charging more money. Start start treating your business more like a business. S dress up a little bit. Be more professional. It's worth it because you get charged more money when you do that. Mm, isn't that know? the truth? Yeah. Get some books. I, I hate books too. I'm the last one to read a book, but Dress for Success, Personality Plus, these are books that I like live my life by, you know, and it's books I wrote, I re read a long time ago. Get some tapes by Zig Ziglar and listen to what he says about stuff because, I love Zig yeah. Always be closing. It's oh, <laughs> always ABCs. Be What's ABCs? Yeah. Ridiculous. What's the reason for the appointment? <laughs> to book another appointment. Did you know that? The reason for the appointment is to book another appointment. Yeah. It's an install. It's a recall. It's a sale. It's, it's whatever it is. Don't lose contact with your customers. And that customer, as they learn learn about you and get to know you better, they will they will move the needle up for you. Right. So what what do you think? So now <clears throat> we want to get going. We're like, okay, I'm in. Eric, you got me. Let's let's do it. How do you feel about like a build for you model where I go and buy the components and closet parts from someone, and maybe I'm just the guy doing the selling and the installing? Is there? Oh, I think more than them? half of the closet companies are doing that. Right? Oh. oh, yeah, and there's large suppliers that will help you with that. So you don't even need to go buy all this equipment. No. You don't need CNC's and edge banders yeah. to get going. Yeah, if you're just if you're listening to this podcast because you're working for someone and you just want to move the needle, you, you can totally not have to have a shop. Closets are really standardized. That's one of the things that I teach in the industry is like, what are the standards? Shoes, shoes are the, all the same width. They might be a little bit longer than each other, but they're all the same width. So a certain amount of shoes fit on a certain size shelf. And then it rolls right in the accessories, like just like, you know, cabins are, I think we, I don't know if we're out of the every three inch world yet. We're kind of in the every three inch world still. So all the accessories are built every three inches. Well, there's even less for closets because there's, we don't, not every three inches is a pair of shoes. Right. And we base all our business on shoes, hanging space and folding space. That's the three things you got to get and get it in there right. And so counting the inventory and understanding what's going on with that and custom building it, custom building it custom designing it is what provides the customer with the proper shelving and the amount of shelving to fit all their stuff and there that's where the value starts their stuff fits you know so that's that's really important and you move the needle up any way you want to so yeah so definitely uh, you don't need a shop you don't need a showroom you you don't need a lot of the things that you currently need you definitely don't need a spray booth um, mm -hmm. Yeah, every everybody that's listening just went like, oh, hallelujah! Yeah. You know, everyone's yeah, because that's right. the biggest problem in the shop, and it's the most used area, and it's the bottleneck. I hear about that bottleneck thing all the time. You well, know, not not for long, and we have robots standing. Right? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Shame, shameless. If plug, you're gonna shameless. stay there, if you're gonna stay there. Then we've got the product for you. We can fix your problems. But why just why not just get out of the problems? Okay, so for the guys that are in the closet space, which there's lots and yeah. some listening right now, what kind of like what are some of the top trends that you're seeing that can take a closet from average to like so, above average? Like, so you know how I said we didn't used to have drawer boxes? Yeah. Well now drawer boxes have become a thing and thank you Europe. 
thank you for correcting us because, you know, the dovetail drawer, it's going to die really soon here, <laughs> you know? And I, I see, I even, I saw, I saw a metal box today that had a wood overlay on top of it because just people wanted, they want the look of wood, but they want the functionality and the smoothness of a metal drawer because, hey, metal drawers slide way better. Like, there's no comparison. When you put a, a side mount, an under mount on a piece of wood and screw it in, or when you clip in a metal runner to a metal side, and the drawer box is then just, you know, wood on the bottom and the back and the face, and your side is all integrated, that's super cool. They just run, they roll nicer. And so that's a huge space that you can move up if you're a closet guy. Like, doing a better box, selling it for more money. You know, drawer, drawer, I think you can get three, 400 bucks for a drawer now in a closet. <laughs> My God. Yeah, and it's, I know it's a $40 box with two pieces of $1.50 TFL and then some kind of nice face and that nice face has become flat TFL. Right. Which made it even easier, and, you know, less lines, less cleaning, uh, cleaner look. And, uh, and then some other things that have happened is like, the industry has gotten into this whole leatherette or fake leather and aluminum extrusion stuff and with anodizing like there's all kinds of really cool products you can see in the closet right now especially here we're at kbiz right now and we're looking at we're walking through and there's closets all over the place mm -hmm. like <laughs> i saw so many closets today i thought it was in somebody's house <laughs> so, like, and like what you can put like Three years ago, we didn't have a scarf rack at all. Now everybody's got a scarf rack. Right. Like all the importers are bringing the scarf racks and lighting, 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 lighting. Mm. You can light a panel, you can light a shelf, you can light the top molding, you can light the bottom molding, you can light the side molding, you can light a drawer when it opens, you can light a door when it opens, you can light the belt rack, you can light the scarf rack, you can light everything. And, and just like when just, I'm picturing that closet and, it, and you open it and it's it's done and it looks nice, you're like, oh, that's a nice closet. And when, it's, when you open it and it's all lit up, that's yeah. a different experience. Yeah, it is. And you don't even have to turn the light onto the closet anymore. Like I have right. lots of customers, they don't turn their light on anymore. And I don't think they turn the LEDs off. I really don't think, they don't get hot because lighting has changed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost a lot of energy anymore and the things last forever. So just leave the light on. So lighting doubles the price of the closet, by the way, because of the value that it adds. It's not the cost of the materials for lighting because they're super easy. Right. It's, it's silicone and some wires that are already pre-clipped and a wireless remote. And so nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be afraid yeah. of. Someone's yeah. already figured all and that out. And you just made the closet look like a million bucks, so charge a million bucks. <laughs> so <laughs> you're, you're laughing, but it was just in the Wall Street Journal. A million dollar closet. Yeah, so I, I, uh, just, I interviewed with the Wall Street Journal. The paper came out, I think it was three or four weeks ago now. There was a huge article in there. Um, I have two lines in it, but I also recommended all the people that are in there because I've got connections. And so there's a huge article in there and there, literally there was a million dollar closet. Oh my God. The, the pictures that are in there are a hundred and fifty and a two hundred fifty thousand dollar closet. Yeah, that rivals kitchens. And it's lit. Every panel has lighting on it. And that's how you drive a seventy five thousand dollar closet up to, to, to up to one hundred twenty five thousand is by just lighting the thing. Oh my God. Yeah. And so with the like I mean Everybody listening is probably salivating right now, going, "Oh my God! I, like, how fast can I get get into this closet thing?" Now, do you see that that closet trending? You know, in an, in a up like there's way, way, way more room in this. There's for, way, way, way more room. Yeah, or is like it like more we, people getting into it and it's on a down. No, 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 no. That's what that's the middle of this conversation is about how many closet companies are there in Vegas? Mm -hmm. How many kitchen cabinet companies are there? How many kitchens are in a house? How many closets are in a house? Yeah. We're not scratched the surface yet. If a large company after 40 years grows by 250%, I'm not going to name names, but you can look up <laughs> the Wall Street Journal. If they can grow by 250% in two years, that means that gap is still there. It's, we're not going to close the gap. And builders are going to keep building houses. People are going to keep having babies. They're going to keep selling shoes. And those closets are going to have to be changed one day. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, we, we used to have this color called cognac, worm cognac. Mm. Spiced, it's like a spiced maple. apple or spice. Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. And anybody that has it doesn't want it. And so they're tearing oh, it out. It comes. Yeah. yeah. 
and yeah. new comes in. Yeah. So yeah, we might build all of them, but they're gonna have to replace all of them eventually too. They're gonna be ugly. So let's just yeah. keep building them. Yeah, I I rue the day that gray becomes a problem because there's so many gray closets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough energy or strength to replace all those. All Please join me. Please join me in the endeavor to replace gray. Okay. Oh um, my gosh. Okay, so we've got um, just a couple of minutes, and I want to just. How, how can people find you? Let's let's start there because maybe they want to give you a uh, shout. So best way to shout out to me is actually on LinkedIn, amazingly <laughs> enough. I use it as social media. It's a B2B platform. Um, I'm Eric Marshall in there, or if you can't remember my name, I'm the Closet Guru. Um, that's the best way to reach out to me, and I do actually respond to all those messages personally. Um, I have an Instagram account too. We have a website. Um, but LinkedIn is probably the best way to get a hold of me directly. Um, I don't really care if you have my phone number either. It's 602-684-6066. I know there's a lot of sixes in there. I'm not the devil. Um, <laughs> but it sounds like it. But yeah, LinkedIn is the best way. I'm in Arizona, um, but I don't sleep much. Like, I'm kind of weird. I live on four hours of sleep like some of my other crazy friends. Well, I see you every, like everywhere I go, yeah. you're there. And I'm so, like, does this guy ever go home? Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. My wife is the most loving person in the whole world. She's actually flying in tonight so we can be together. Um, we're going to some parties, and tomorrow she's going to be at the show. So if you're at the show, definitely like message me. We'll come find each other. I'm on the floor all day. I get there at 8 in the morning before it opens, and I don't leave until the last happy so hour is done on the you're floor. A, you're a machine. Yeah, and I, I just love life, you guys. I've gone through a lot of hard stuff in my life. Um, it wasn't all easy. There was a lot of things I'm not talking about. I didn't have it easy, you guys. It wasn't handed to me. I had to work for it. Um, and you can too. And I'm here to tell you that I'm, I'm here for you guys. My whole life now is based upon helping others. Like That's why I agreed to go on the podcast. That's why anybody that wants me to do a podcast with them, I'm happy to do it for you. Um, anybody wants to talk to me and find out what, like, where you're at and help you move the needle forward, I'm here for you guys. So just reach out. I'm helpful. I love people. I can't get enough of people, you know. It shows. It yeah. shows. And so that's why I'm around. Yeah. I'm well, not, I think birds, yeah. Of feather, birds of a feather flock together. Yes. Like, why, how did we come into each other's life? Exactly. I have the same mission statement pretty much is like we're putting all of this out into the world. Just like we just... I did woodworking the hard way for so long, yeah. and it's like, I just, if I can say anything that's gonna help someone avoid half of the suffering that I had to go through, uh, then man, preach it. Yes. You know, from the mountaintop, because yes. nothing feels better. Yeah, there's no, there's no better feeling than helping somebody else succeed. 100%. Like, you're self-succeeding, that's one thing, but watching somebody else do success, and you get along, be alongside them, and profit in your mind because of that, because the mind profit is way better than the money profit. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't, I don't even know if we could end on a better note than that. That was, that's a mic drop moment. Right so, on. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we finally got to pull it together here. Yeah. We had to fly all the way to Las Vegas to do it. Yes. But we did. Fine. It. But thank you very much for, for coming sure. out oh, and yeah. being yeah. on the show. We appreciate it. And I know that there's a lot of people that are gonna have a lot of wheels spinning right now when it comes yeah. to next time they go cut a piece of melamine is this going in a closet or not yeah all right well see thanks, you all Aaron. soon see we, you soon see you soon all right well that wraps up another episode of on the shop floor thank you once again eric marshall for thank joining you. us and that's it for las vegas that's a wrap bam bam <laughs> and we're out <laughs>